Hey, it's Tuesday morning. Good to see everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome in. Glad you're here today. Everybody's doing good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Here we are in Nahum, uh, chapters one through three, which is, that's all there is. Uh, yesterday, we started talking about Nahum. We're going to finish up talking about Nahum today. So we started um, by talking. It, it's as if Nahum has been broken down into, th into three kind of kind of books, right, uh, within the book of Nahum. And the, the first book we started talking about yesterday was a theology book. OK, it, it was it was all about God, all about who he is. Uh, and so that's where we uh, stopped off yesterday. Well, today we're going to talk about it. Uh, because there's military, there's a military book contained here as well. Now, uh, as you read or when you read the second chapter, um, there is uh, a lot of detail and, quite frankly, a lot of discussion about a military invasion that's going to ultimately bring Nineveh down to its knees. And you have to keep in mind, when Nahum wrote these words, it had not taken place yet. See, this is all prophecy. He's making a prophecy. This actually came to pass in 1612 BC when the Medes came and they invaded Nineveh. Okay. So when you read this chapter and compare it with history and actually what took place, uh, you're going to discover it's absolutely accurate in terms of what he predicted was going to happen to the Ninevites. Okay. Now, in verse 1, he says, He that dasheth in pieces is come up before thy face. So here's the picture of the guards on the walls. And you look, you see the invading army getting ready to come to Nineveh. So they turn around in verse 1, and they start giving orders. They, you know, they say, hey, you know, uh, keep the munition, watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power mightily. Now, the Ninevites say that now there is an invasion, and they didn't think they could be taken, and yet now there's an army that's getting ready to invade, and they're making preparations. And all of a sudden, here comes that army, and they are laying siege on the city. Now, in verse 3, the shield of this, it says, the shield of his mighty men is made red, and the valiant men are in scarlet. <coughs> Excuse me. In those days, it is, it, they say that the Medes wore uniforms of red. Their shields were painted red as well. So this is a picture of the invading Mede army to the city of Nineveh. Now, they break into the city. And here's what, look at verse 3. Here's what it said. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. So in verse 4, it continues, the chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against the other, uh, one against another, the broad ways. And so it's, it, it, it's my understanding that in those days, the wheels on the chariots had very sharp blades. And when they would invade, they would mow people down like it was almost like cutting grass, right? Just mow them down. Cut, it would cut people to pieces. And Nahum sees this invasion of the chariots. And so they came and laid siege to the city for about three years. Then in verse 6, here's what it says. The gates of the rivers shall be opened and the place shall be dissolved. Now, we know that for three years, the city of Nineveh was sieged. And this was something they thought was impossible. Nineveh said, there's no way, right? Right. So then God sent heavy rains. And when the rains started to fall, the floods came. And the floods destroyed certain portions of the walls. Water started pouring into the city of Nineveh. So much so that the, that the palace was inundated with water. Look at verse 8. It says, but Nineveh is, is of an old... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm having a problem. Ah, there we go. Nineveh is of old like a pool of water. And, and that's exactly exactly what Nahum uh, predicted. And that's what took place when Nineveh was invaded. Okay. Now, if you look at the picture, okay, uh, this is, a, it, there's, there's grief at the, 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 the siege and the, and the 
and what's taking place to the city. Verse 9 says, take the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold. Ooh. Excuse me. Verse 10 says, she is empty and void and waste. Look at the reaction of the people when war hits them and the judgment of God falls on them. The heart melts and the knees smith together. Much pain is in all the loins and the faces of them all gather blackness. It, in other words, it, this is people under siege and judgment has come. So he says in verse 11, where is the dwelling of the lions? Now, the, the Ninevites were fond of the symbol of the lions. And when you study their history, you're, you find that in their architecture, their art, in many things, they make great use of lions. So now God is, is taunting them. And God is saying, you know, where are your lion symbols now? Right? Where are they at, Nineveh? Where's your lion symbols now? So we have here a picture of an invasion. It's a military invasion. So what is God trying to say to you and me? What can, what can we glean from this? Well, here's what he's trying to say. The time's going to come when God's going to deal with the injustices of the nations. And there's going to be a time when those nations that have bullied other nations are going to be judged. Okay? So chapter one was like a theology book, chapter two, okay? It's like he's opening up a military book. So what about chapter three? What about chapter three? Mm. It's an autopsy book, right? It's like an autopsy book. Well, he's going to examine the causes of the death, and he's going to, dis and, and he's going to discover the internal reasons why the city of Nineveh fell. The first reason that Nineveh fell was because of their fierceness. In verse 1, it says, Woe to the bloody city. Nineveh was a city of blood. It was full of lies and robbery. And they used deceit as a means of diplomacy. So you think about Pearl Harbor, Memorial Day, and the time the invasion was planned and the time things were getting underway, diplomats from Japan were in Washington speaking lies, and they were they were lying and deceiving. And that's how exactly Nineveh did, right? Verse 2 says, The noise of a whip and the nose of the rattling of the wheels and the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. Well, in verse 3, it talks about how inhuman Nineveh was. And, and there, there is no end of their corpses. They stumble on corpses, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's just on and on and on. A fellow by the name of, Mal of, of Malevich uh, and all the dead bodies they found and that they had slaughtered, right? Um, and when you read about other cruel rulers in history, not crulers, but cruel rulers <laughs> in the history of the world, and how they piled corpses on top of corpses, dead bodies and skulls and skeletons everywhere. Uh, yeah, the fierceness of the people. That's why God's judging them. But then notice the filth of the place. Verse 4 says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, one of the favorite gods, small g, of the Ninevites was the god Ishtar, the god of sexual passion and the god of fertility and the god of war. Pe these people worshipped these kinds of godless beings and it involved uh, things like witchcraft and whoredoms, right? So they were deeply involved in the occult. So we're involved in the occult in this nation, I believe, as well. There are some people who seem like they cannot function without the horoscope they have every day, right? They got to go to the horoscope to tell them what to do. And they have psychic networks and palm readers and, you know, all of that. And you're going to find your future in the scriptures. Friends, that's the answer. It's what God has to say in his word. But yet here were people filled with the occult and God says, I'm bringing you down. So there's an autopsy taking place. Verse 6, I'll cast abominable filth upon thee. God says, I'm going I'm to dump you with filth. 
I'm going to make you vile and set you as a gazing stock, right? Friends, you're going to be like, um, I hate to say it this way, but a slut on, on exhibit. These are awesome passages, but it's a picture of an autopsy, the corruption on the inside. And they thought they were, they were, nobody could conquer them. But look at verse 12. It says, all of your strongholds are going to be like fig, leaf, uh, fig trees. If they be shaken, they shall fall into the mouth of the eater. He's saying, you're so ripe for judgment. It's going to be like somebody eating figs. And it's just going to fall off the tree right in their mouth. So he mocks their attempts to defend themselves in verse 14. It says, draw thee waters for the siege, fortify thy strongholds, go into clay and tread the mortar, make strong the brick kiln. There shall be fire, devour thee, the sword shall cut thee off. So now let's go to the last verse. There is no healing of thy bruise. It was too late. They had gone too far. Now, it says, thy, word, thy wound is grievous, all that bear the fruit. That, bruit, sorry, brute. Uh, that's an old English word. And brute means B-R-U-I-T. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, that means news. And so, and so all you, all that hear the report, all that get the story of fate, right? Nineveh shall, shall clap the hands over thee. So when the word gets out that Nineveh has fallen, the Bible says the nations are going to clap. They're going to cheer. And, and sometimes what the earth rejoices about is not what heaven rejoices about. But sometimes what the earth mourns is not what heaven mourns. If you turn to the book of Revelation, let me show you uh, kind of a, well, an interesting verse, some verses there in Scripture. In chapter 18, verses 19 and 20. Uh, so in this chapter, chapter 18, there's another picture of judgment. And the final judgment, when God judges uh, the nations of the world and the godless of the world and the injustice is finally made right. When old Babylon falls in the 18th chapter of the book of Revelation, we are told in verse 17, in one hour, so great riches is come to naught. In other words, it all comes crashing down. Verse 19 says, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason, reason of her costliness on the earth. There is mourning. There is something very different going on in heaven. Look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. So God has put within us a sense of right and wrong. God has put within us a sense of judgment. And when justice is done, heaven rejoices. Heaven says God's will has been done. So what is the message for us? Well, number one, God's word is going to come true. It says, it says uh, in, in God's word, mark it down. It's going to come true. If it says it, it's true. You can deny it. You can ignore it. You can say it's not true, but it's still true, right? If God says it in his word, it's going to come true. And the second truth is this. See, sooner or later, God's justice is going to prevail. God's justice is going to prevail. Now, the third message is this. It doesn't matter what kind of trouble you're going through. It doesn't matter how things seem to be unjust and not being corrected by you. Sooner or later, God is going to do the right thing and make the right thing prevail. He is going to judge the godless. And if you doubt that, then try to find Nineveh somewhere. You won't find it. Why? It's not there anymore. Mm. Wow. What an ending to the book of Nahum, right? Wow. What an ending. Well, guess what? Hey, we're on to another book tomorrow, right? We're going to on to another book. Uh, Lord willing, creek don't rise. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. <laughs> I love saying that word. I don't know why. Habakkuk. <laughs> I know I'm weird. So anyway, good to see everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Be safe in all that you do today. Know that I love you. Most importantly, know Jesus loves you, friends. He loves you more than anybody could, and he wants to have a relationship with you. Finally, 
share that gospel of Jesus. Share the love of Jesus. Share your testimony with those around you. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's been a great day. I'll see you again, Lord willing, tomorrow morning. Bye-bye for now.